Hello again, good people. Uh, you might remember a while back I made a video about the uh, Coupe 415C in which the marketing claimed it was, well, it was aimed at newcomers to flying and that the aircraft was unspinnable. Well, I, I didn't pursue that claim at the time to see if it was true. I think like most pilots, both virtual and real, I don't want to put my aircraft into a situation that, for a real pilot, might lead to their death and for a virtual pilot would, uh, well, I suppose, at least mean uh, the bother of resetting the sim. Most authorities shy away from teaching how to get out of a spin and rather show you how to not get into that situation in the first place. This is probably very wise. After all, a real-life spin is a frightening position to be in and a wrong move might make it worse. However, a flight simulator used in uh, this case as a learning tool gives you the ideal means of exploring the world of spin or the spinning world well, both really. Uh, now, I believe that X-Plane is a much better at this than other simulators. Well, I suppose, of course, I would, wouldn't I? However, the advantage of X-Plane is that it uh, uses blade element theory to calculate the forces acting on the aircraft's flying surfaces. And so I can be reasonably sure that if I tell you a particular aircraft in my virtual hangar is easy to spin, then it's probably true in real life. I remember back when I had X-Plane 9, I had an aircraft, I think it was a Cessna 180, uh, that was so easy to put into a flat spin and uh, would always lead to oblivion. So for this video, I decided to grasp the nettle and test some of the likely candidates in my hangar. Now after a few hours of making myself dizzy, I seem to have come up with what seems to me a surprising result. The flat spin, which might lead to a big hole in the ground, is not an easy thing to achieve. Now, before you shout at me, please let me explain. First, what is a spin? A spin is caused by differential lift on the wings and is characterized by one wing in a stall and the other wing still producing lift and, and still flying. I think that most people know that to cause your aircraft to enter a spin, you have to reduce speed to cause a stall, a simple maneuver that is taught in most flying schools. Getting out of the stall is as easy as pushing forward on the yoke, putting yourself into a dive and regaining the lift on the wings. Most aircraft are pretty good at doing this in a stable fashion. Putting your aircraft in the next stage is also easy, the spiral dive. When your aircraft is in the stall, you can either wait until one wing drops and turn your aircraft towards that drop, or if the aircraft is acting very stably and doesn't want to drop a wing, uh, you can start the spiral by pushing the rudder and the ailerons in the direction you want to go. Now you're in the spiral dive, which most aircraft can achieve. Uh, you perhaps wouldn't want to do this in a real aircraft, especially if it wasn't certified for aerobatics. Getting out of a spiral dive is easy enough. Opposite rudder and aileron push forward on the yoke to stop the spiralling and gain control of the aircraft. So how about the flat spin? How do you get from a spiral dive into a flat spin? And the answer is, well, you don't. When you're in a spiral dive, both wings are producing lift. Not by the same amount, perhaps, but both still are producing lift. When your aircraft is in a spin, one wing is stalled. That is the definition of a spin. So by going from stalling the aircraft straight into a spiral dive, you've already missed the opportunity uh, where your aircraft can be put into a flat spin. I found that the timing of the manoeuvre and the wind conditions and the characteristics or stability of the aircraft will determine whether a flat spin will occur. Now in researching for this video I only looked at about 
uh, I don't know, 15, 20 aircraft uh, to see if I could spin them. And I only found two that I could reliably put into a flat spin. Uh, these were the Carinado V35 Bonanza and the Arabesque Diamond DA62. With both aircraft, I had to move the centre of gravity back to make it tail heavy. I gather that having the centre of gravity too far back has been determined to be a factor in real life crashes. I also set the trim so that it was easy for me to hold the nose up to reach zero speed. The final manoeuvre is, as the nose comes down from the stall, bank the aircraft and full deflection on the rudder. Kick the rudder. You're almost trying to flick the aircraft round into the spin. If you enter a spiral dive, then you have lost it and you'll have to try again. So here we are in a flat spin. Now let me stop it to show you something interesting. The lines coming out of the wings uh, show the forces generated. And for those of you who don't know, you can do this in X-Plane by pressing Control M. Notice the forces on the wings are very different. The lift generated on the left wing, uh, the, the one moving forward, is much greater than the right wing, which is essentially moving backwards. So how do you get out of this? Well, good luck. People have been successful with the following procedure. Full opposite rudder, full throttle, full in turn ailerons and forward stick. You can also try pulsating the engine in time with the spin motion. You can push your body forward to move the centre of gravity. And if your landing gear moves forward when you put it down, it might be worth trying that to alter the centre of gravity as well. These steps all look simple to achieve in a simulator, and they might well work. In real life, with panic in your eyes and your brain being mashed by centrifugal forces, if you can remember all the steps and manage to stop the spin, then you are a hero. What I should say, before people try to correct me in the comments, is that the flat spin recovery steps are not universal. There's equal thought that the aileron should be centralised, for instance. Well, I guess you pays your money and you take your chances. So at the beginning of this video I said that flight schools teach you how to avoid entering a spin and you do this by making coordinated turns and not straying out of your flight envelope. So if you can easily get out of a spiral dive by taking prompt action, then what's the problem? What I forgot to mention is that during a spin you lose a lot of height very quickly. If you're too close to the ground then disaster strikes. Ow! That hurt! So let's rewind that and see what happened. I'm coming in at quite a sharp angle. Gear down, flaps down, but I know I'm still too fast. So I raise the nose and cut the throttle. I'm so fixated on reducing speed that I miss the turn. So I bank to the left and push the left rudder. Unfortunately, this stalls my left wing. In my panic, I bank to the right. But this only makes the stall worse. And so I go down. So with that unhappy ending, all I can say is Bye-bye.